Live from Washington, D.C., it's Cube Conversations with John Furrier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the special exclusive Cube Conversations here in Washington, D.C. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the Cube, here at Amazon Web Services headquarters, world headquarters for Public Sector Summit in Arlington, Virginia. Our special guest is Trisha davis Muffet, who's the Director of Marketing for Worldwide Amazon Web Services. Thanks for joining me. Yep. So we see each other at reInvent and Public Sector Summit, but you're always running around. You got so many things going on. You got I am. big responsibility <laughs> here. You guys are running hard and yep. you got a great culture, Teresa and team. Uh, yep. Competitive, like to have fun, don't like to lose. <laughs> What's it like being a marketer for the fastest growing, hottest, product in Washington, D.C. and around the world. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really been amazing. When I came here, I kind of took a leap of faith on the company because um, it's four and a half years ago that I came. And so I literally uh, accepted the job before we had even gotten our first FedRAMP approval. <laughs> so I wasn't entirely sure that this was going to um, be the, you know, the, the place to go to for technology for the government. But um, I really loved the way that we were helping the government innovate and save money, of course. Um, I think most of us who are in public sector um, have a passion for citizens and for making government better. And so that's really what I saw in Teresa and her team, that they had such a passion to do that and that the technology was going to help the government really improve yeah. the lives of citizens. So um, it's been great. Uh, you know, one of the things that's been amazing is uh, the passion that our customers have for our technology. Um, I think they get a little taste of it and they go, wow, I can't believe what I can do that I thought was impossible before. Mm -hmm. And so I love seeing what our customers do with the technology. It's, you know, some people would think it might be easy to be a marketer for Amazon, but if you think about it, you have so much speed in your business. Mm -hmm. You have a cult of personality in the cloud addiction or cloud value, mm -hmm. the addiction to the outcomes that are happening. Uh -huh. And we're and we're a customer, everyone kind of knows that's pretty, pretty biased on it. We've seen the success ourselves. Yeah. But you guys have a community everywhere you go. You're seeing Amazon as they take more territory down. Public cloud originally, now enterprise and public cloud, public sector, mm -hmm. enterprise, public cloud. Each kind of wave of territory that Amazon goes into, mm -hmm. Amazon Web Services, there's a huge community. Yeah. And so that's another another element. I mean, Public Sector Summit last year, I mean, it felt like reInvent. I think yeah. so this year is going to be bigger. Yeah, we had um, 6,500 uh, plus people attend last year just in the Washington, D.C. area. And we've also expanded that program now. And we're taking our public sector summit specifically for government, education, and nonprofit around the world. So this year we'll be in Brussels, in Canberra, Australia. We have great adoption in Australia as well with the government there. Um, in Singapore, uh, Ottawa. So we're really expanding quite a bit and helping governments around the world to so adopt. So that's a challenge. How are you going to handle that? Because you guys have always been kind of with the summits. Mm -hmm. Do you coattail summits? Do you go separate? Do yeah, you no, we go separate. Before? So we actually have um, the public sector summits. We take the the experience of our technology to government towns that wouldn't typically get a summit. Okay. So for instance, here in the United States, of course, San Francisco and New York, there's a lot of uh, commercial businesses. So yeah. we have our big summits there, um, but there's not as much commercial business here in Washington, DC. So really public sector takes the lead here. And then we focus on some of the things that really are most important to our public sector customers, things mm -hmm. like procurement and acquisition, things like the security and compliance that's so critical in the government sector. And then also, we do a really um, careful job of curating our customers because we know that our government customers mm -hmm. want to hear from each other. They want to hear from people who are blazing a trail within the public sector. They don't necessarily want to hear about what we want to say. They want to hear yeah. what their peers are doing with the technology. And so last year we had over a hundred of our public sector customers mm -hmm. speaking to each other about what they were doing with the cloud. And I find that's impressive. I would actually comment on the Cube that week that it's interesting you let the customers do the talking. Yeah. I mean, that's the best ultimate sign of success and traction. Yeah, and the great thing is, uh, you know, I've worked in other places in the public sector, and government customers can be kind of shy about talking about what they're doing. <laughs> um, you know, they're very motivated to just 
keep things going calmly, quietly, you know, get their jobs done. Um, but I well, think- Well, it doesn't help, doesn't, I mean, it doesn't hurt when you have the top guy at the CIA say, the best <laughs> decision we've ever made. It's the most innovative thing we've ever done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. talk about being shy. Yeah. That's yeah. the CIA, by the way. That's the CIA. And we've also had, I mean, you know, people like NASA JPL who have been very outspoken. I mean, Tom Soderstrom said that it was conservatively one one hundredth of the cost of what it would have been in, uh, you know, if he had built out the infrastructure himself to build the um, infrastructure for his Mars land. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind the of... The gifts keep giving. I mean, you get lower prices. Okay, let's I change yeah. gears because here you yeah. get a couple things that I've observed uh -huh. to every reInvent and kind of being a customer. And I think I've used Amazon when it first came out as an entrepreneur and when EC2 was, had no URL support. But that's, that's, <laughs> all, that's shown my age. Uh -huh. But here's the thing. You guys have enabled customers to solve problems they couldn't solve in the past. Right. You mentioned NASA and, and, and a variety of others as well. NASA yeah. Compute. But you guys are also in public sector specifically are doing new things, right. new problems that no one's ever seen before mm -hmm. in society, entrepreneurship, yep. diversity and inclusion, yep. education, nonprofits. Yep. I mean, you don't think of GovCloud and public sector yeah. and think nonprofits, education. Yeah. So it's kind of you have this, these sectors, but yeah. they're coming together. Yeah. This is a new phenomenon. Can you talk and explain yeah. the dynamics behind that and the opportunities? Sure. I mean, I love to hear the stories of what our customers are doing when they really are tackling a problem that no one had uh, thought of before. So, for instance, at reInvent this year, um, one of our public sector customers who spoke was Thorn. And, you know, they are using um, AI to crawl the dark web and help find people who are trafficking children in, you know, human trafficking. And you know, that's a great use of AI, and that's the kind of thing. It also helps our public servants because it helps to make uh, police officers' jobs mm -hmm. more effective. So, of course, we know the police officers, there's never enough police officers mm -hmm. to go around. There's never enough detectives to look into everything that they need to, and this makes them so much more effective to make the world a mm -hmm. safer, better place. Um, I also love some of the things about educational outcomes. So Ivy Tech Community College is one of our great community college customers. And they're using big data analysis to put together all of the different data sets that they have about their students and identify who might be at risk of failing a class 10 days into the semester so that they can help intervene with those students. Where was students. that class when I needed it? I know. You know hey, I mean, it's I'm really- about to say, hey, homework time. Yeah, I mean, it really is looking at, you know, what kind of issues that they're having very early on with attendance, with different, different behavioral yeah. things. You had a great example in, at reInvent with the California Community College system. Mm -hmm. That was a very interesting one. He was up there bragging like it was yeah. nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, the community colleges, that really goes into this idea of we're trying to expand opportunity for a wide range of people. So, you know, you might think of computer scientists as, okay, that's gonna be all the Carnegie Mellon and Stanford and MIT people, and of course, you know, those are great contributors to computer science, but the fact is that computer science is so critical in so many aspects of life and in so many different kinds kinds of careers. And we know that one of the limiters to our own growth is going to be the talent that we have available to take advantage of the technology. So we've been really working hard to expand opportunity for a wide range of people so that any smart person with an idea can be using our technology. So that's part of what's behind building the AWS Educate program, which is a program to offer free computer science training to any university student or college student anywhere in the so world. this is a program you guys are doing? This is a program hey, we're slow doing. Slow down, now rewind. It's, what's it called again? AWS Educate. Okay. And it's a program that offers free credits to use AWS to any student who's enrolled in any kind of uh, university or college anywhere around the world. I mean, that's a gateway drug to cloud computing. Absolutely. I mean, free and resources. Uh, yeah, and we're giving them uh, training paths so, so they that they can- So they spin up an instance, so they want to write some code, hello yep. world or whatever. Yep. They want to do. They yeah, just... and they can take different paths and learn, okay, I want to learn a data science pathway, so I'm going to go right. that way. I want to learn a websites pathway. And they can go through things and build a portfolio of projects that they've actually so built. can they tap into some of the AWS AI tools too? They can tap into a wide range of tools and they have different levels of uh, tiers of credits that they get. So it's a really great program to really open up com uh, cloud computing. And, that, and, and is there any limitations on that? Is it 
What it's grade a, levels? Is it college and above? Is uh, it high school? Actually, at reInvent, we just opened it up to students 14 and above. Beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. And then we also have a program is called... There like, how do they prove they're a student? I mean, you know, uh, they, well, having a, having a school, uh, an EDU email address or their school being registered through the program. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then we also have another program called We Power Tech. And that really is a program to help um, open up the, the talent pool again to women, to underserved communities, to people of different ethnic backgrounds who might not see themselves in technology because you know they don't see themselves as computer programmers or on TV or whatever. Or they don't see their peer group in there or right. some sort of, it might be an inclusion issue or a right. diversity issue. Right, and we're looking at the, if you take Educate and We Power Tech, we're looking at that full pipeline of talent all the way from kids who are deciding, should I, pursue computer science or not, all the way through to professionals and getting them to try to stay in technology. So you guys are legit on this. You're not going to just check the box and focus on a narrow thing. You still have, a lot of companies do that where they go, oh, we're targeting yeah. young girls or women. You right. guys are looking at the spectrum, yep. broader. Yeah, and we're really looking at different communities and helping people to find their community in technology so that they can find supportive networks and also find people to mentor them or find people to mentor who are, you know, elsewhere. How big of a problem is it right now in today's culture and the online culture to find peers and friends and that, to do work like this? Because, I mean, it just doesn't seem to me that there's been any, any innovation in yeah. online message groups. It yeah. seems like so 90, 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, know? I think it is tough, and I think there are some things that we're trying to break through. For instance, um, a lot of the role models out there are the same people over and over again, yeah. right? So we're trying to find new role models, find, and we find that through our customers. We find customers who are doing interesting work, and we're trying to cultivate their voice yeah. and help put them well, on stage. New, new voices because there's new things, machine learning, right. AI, these right. are new disciplines, data right. science across the board. Yeah, and one of the things that I love about the technology is it really is has a democratizing effect, right? If you have an idea, you can make that idea happen for very little money with just your ingenuity and you know your ability mm -hmm. to stick to it, right? So, so I gotta ask you the hard question. Yeah, also. go ahead. Shouldn't be hard for you, but uh -huh. Amazon is um, gritty. It's been called gritty by me, hustling. Mm -hmm. But they're very good with their money. They don't really waste a lot yeah, in marketing. Yeah, we're frugal. Very frugal, but you're very efficient. So I got to mm -hmm. ask you the, your your favorite guerrilla marketing technique. Um, wow. Because you guys do more with less, right? I mean, we you, do. You don't, I mean, once been criticized on Wired magazine. I remember reading it years ago about they were comparing the swag bag to reinvent to like <laughs> Google, which gave out phones and yeah. you know it's kind of like typical reporter. But yeah. my point is, you guys spend your money on education to right. engineers. Yeah. You don't skimp on that, but you might yeah. not put the flair onto an event. Yeah. Well, now you guys are doing it, but back then. Well, no, I think, there are, I think there are two things. So one of them is the aesthetic of our events, right? We typically do have a very stripped down aesthetic and we've made frugal look cool. So I think that's a, one of the things that I learned when I came here was, you know, go ahead and have the concrete floor and put quotes from customers there instead of paying to carpet it, right? So don't waste money on things that don't add value. That's one of the, the core tenets of yeah. what we do in marketing. Get a better band to the rug. <laughs> exactly. You guys exactly. always have great music. We do always yeah. have great music. <laughs> Trisha, tell me about your favorite program or project. You've done a lot yeah. over the years. Pick your favorite child. What's, what's yeah. your favorite? You've got a lot of great stuff going on. Do you have a yeah. favorite? I think that my favorite is probably the City on a Cloud Innovation Challenge, which is something we've done every year for the last four years. Um, and we really went and asked cities, tell us what you're doing with our technology. Because we weren't sure what they were doing, because it's not very expensive for cities to run on us. Um, and we found that they were doing incredible things. They were doing water monitoring in their cities to help improve the quality of life of their citizens. They were delivering education more effectively. They were helping their transportation run more uh, in a more effective way. New York City Department of Transportation was doing really cool citizen-facing apps to help them manage their transportation challenges. And also cities all around the world. We ha we've had people um, put in things about 
uh, garbage management in Jerusalem and about you know uh, lighting management in a Japanese city. I mean, we've had all kinds of really interesting stories come out, and um, I just love hearing what the customers are doing. And this year we added a dream big category where we said, if you had the money, what would you do with technology in your city? And we've been really thrilled to be able to offer grants and fund some of those things to help cities get started. That's awesome. Not only is it engaging for them to engage with you through the program, it's inspirational. Yeah. I mean, the use cases are everything from IoT to every computer. Yeah. And we've also had um, partners submit as well, and we've learned about things like parking applications that cities are putting in place to help yeah. their citizens find better parking or um, you know all kinds of really interesting how to uh, keep track of the trees and do a tree census in their yeah. cities things like that maybe I'll have to, uh, borrow that and give you credit for it as a cube question what would you do with yet unlimited money exactly exactly <laughs> well and the great part is that most of the cities find out that they can do what they want to do with very little money yeah. you know they think it's going to be millions of dollars and then they realize oh my gosh it's going to be hard for me to spend this fifty thousand dollar grant because uh -huh. it doesn't cost that much that's awesome and you got a big event coming up in June Public yep. Sector Summit again. Any preview on that? Anything you can share? I'm sure it's yeah. a lot of things in the, in the, up in the air. A lot but. of really cool things. I, we're, we're very excited to have some of our great customers on stage again. Um, we're also this year going to have a pre-day where we're going to feature air and space uh, workloads on AWS. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, I think we're going to have Blue Origin there and we're going to talk about what yeah. it's going to take to get to the, get the next to bring planet. This, this crew there. And certainly that's beautiful for cloud and also yeah. there's a huge robotic trend. Yep. People love, they love to geek out on space related mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, the Cube will be there. Any numbers? Is it going to be the same location, or is it going to be? It's going to be the same location convention? at the convention center, June twentieth and twenty first. Yep. Um, we're going to have boot camps and certification labs and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I expect we'll grow again. Uh, you know, so definitely more how than seven thousand people. How big was the first one? Oh my gosh! The first one was in a little was in a little uh, hotel conference room. I think there were 150 people there. <laughs> Sounds like reInvent happening all over again. Yep. We've seen this movie before. Yep. Trisha, thanks so much for coming on the Cube here. Thank you. In the headquarters of Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit in Washington D.C., we're in Arlington, Virginia, right next to the nation's capital. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.